era of Usman, the Islam spread very fastly. So there were many people around the world. So, so, so at that time, Usman asked to gather all the all the Quran because these were new territories. So then he he gathered all everything. He double checked everything and then he wrote the one and then he distributed all those new. And he, and he burnt the ones that differed. No, there was no different, but maybe some something some people. Come on, let's, let's not lie here, man. I mean, like, I, I've been here long enough. I know enough about the Quran. You know I know enough about the Quran. I don't know why you're trying to pull this nonsense to me. Listen to me. You said you first said that Uthman was the one that collected all the Quran, and then you backstepped and said, oh, no, it's not Uthman was not there. It's Ali and all these other guys. And then all of a sudden, now you're telling me that Uthman is the one that ordered the compilation, which I agree with you. But let's, let's, let's be honest here. There were different Qurans with different eyes and some surahs that were missing and Uthman burnt the other copies so that they wouldn't differ. At that time the writing is not like a computer or a digital writing or a, di a digital translation, right? So at that time, yes, maybe there some ayah was missing, some ayahs of verses of Quran. So at that point Uthman was the third caliph of the right caliph of Prophet Muhammad. He gathered and brought everything. He made sure that every verse is complete and then he made one and then he said the remaining some incomplete, some pages missing, there was not, you can have a photocopy paper. So that makes sense. But this book, Bible, which you have, does not make sense at all. Because it says some wrote by Paul, some is a New Testament, some is Old Testament, some written by this, some... Un you just admitted that the Quran has different people that wrote it. In fact, no, I, they, I did it, not say, my friend David, I did not say different means. Okay, so who wrote the Quran? Let's go back. I, who wrote the Quran? Okay, I told you, when the Gabriel started to bring Ikra Bismillah, Book Allah Zikhalak, when is the came from the Allah? Okay, maybe, let me, let me, let me clarify the question. Who recorded the revelations of Muhammad when they were originally spoken? Well, well, as I told you, Usman, Ali, Muawiyah, they all... Few other people, companions of the Prophet, no, not just Uthman. No, the, the, these three I knew, maybe one more, maybe one more, two more. However, when the, the verses came, the it didn't, Quran didn't came in one day, every all Quran, right? It came during a time span, so every time verse came, Prophet number dictate, and then the Usman, Ali, they, they, they used to write it. And at which point when some verses are missing, then in the era of Usman, when Islam widespread, so that time Usman gathered he compiled. All, yes, and then he compiled it, that's it. So it makes sense, but this Bible doesn't make any sense. Okay, How so, so, let, me, so let, me, let, me, let me understand and, and summarize and you correct me. So Muhammad had a few revelations between 610 and 622. I believe those are the two, two uh, dates we're dealing with. Different people heard what he said. His revelation was heard by different people, but not everybody heard every single revelation. Some eyes were missing in some people's compilations. Am I correct so far? I'm correct so far. Okay, and then at the end, Uthman, uh, this is uh, either during or after the death of Muhammad. Which one? After. After the death of Muhammad, Uthman ordered the compilation of all the known recitations of, of the Quran. Am I correct? Yeah, that is correct. Okay, and so he... He got one, I guess, main compilation of the Quran so that they, people wouldn't differ like the Jews and the Christians. Am, am I correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, so I, so I, I know my history. So, so, to the next so no, no. So I, I have a question for you. Okay. All these people that heard the recitations or recorded them, do you know who they were? Oh, they're very close and the right companions of Prophet I know, but do you know who they were, their last name, where they were born? Do you know much of their history? Not just Uthman. You know, you got Uthman. You know Ali. Okay, and who, and who else? Because we know that there was compilations from many other people. Do you know who their, what their last name was? No, every Amir yes, he was the, he was the brother-in-law of Prophet Muhammad, right? So he's, I know, and the Saad ibn Waqas, his father's name was Waqas, first name was Saad, right? Because all people wrote it as the verses came, step by step they wrote it. However, your Bible which you are using, this one, you should... Let's know, go to my Bible. Yeah, Let's go to my Bible. You should know that this Bible written by, some authors are unknown, some written by Paul, some written by somebody, some by Matthew. You should know that what exactly, even if this is not a word of God. So the Quran, I, I invite you to Quran to learn that, that the book is a safe as is came in one language. The Bible came in, in Aramaic, Hebrew, right? But you even can't read the Hebrew, you don't know where... No, I can read the Hebrew and the Greek. Okay. I can. Okay, wonderful. Where is the original Bible came in Hebrew? We don't have the original Bible, just like you don't have the original Quran. No, you don't, because it was written on parchments. You just admitted that Uthman got rid of uh, the, the previous compilations and made his own. Now, I have a, have a question for you. Uthman, who ordered the compilation of the Quran anyway? 
Focus. At the time of Osman. Did God order the compilation of the Quran? Osman was the right third right caliph of Did God order the compilation of the Quran? God, no. So it's a book of man. No, book of God. Came God didn't even a comp didn't even didn't even order the compilation of the Quran. Word of God, my friend, Quran is all word of God. How do we know that Uthman, his compilation, was actually the words of Muhammad? Do you even know that for sure? Because he burnt everything no, else. That, yes, that's a good question. The, at the time when this one compiled the Quran, the, all the right caliphs and the other people with the very close companions, they witnessed the Quran came to Prophet Muhammad. Oh, they witnessed. So they, so they witnessed when the Quran came. They saw when the Usman compiled. They were very close and they were alive. So there was no. We can't find anything, any any hadith or anything. Anybody said that this is not the word came on Prophet Muhammad. We never found any contradiction from the statement of those people. That's what we believe. When they didn't contradict it, so that's why it is true. But for this Bible, is is all authors unknown. No, I I, I, li I like the fact I like the fact that at the end of the day, all you have. No, I, I will get. Yeah, I'll get. I'll move on to the other. But hold on, hold on a second. I like the fact that the only real true evidence of your Quran is the fact that you believe that you have witnesses that, no no listen you believe that you have you don't have the original Quran we already passed that you have a man who compiled something that wasn't even authorized by God or Muhammad to compile it so it's a book of man and third thing is that all you really have is witnesses now let's go to the Bible now we have a, a, a book that was uh, compiled by uh, by many authors over a period of time and we have over 500 witnesses that witnessed the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his coming of and his coming we have the early church that has other other writings that confirm the the writings in the Bible and we even have prophetic statements from prophets of old which your Quran affirms was true that Jesus Christ was coming now now if and if I were to base what what my my Bible and look at whether it's authentic or not the Quran itself affirms and authenticates my Bible. It says that my Bible is true. It says that the Torah, the Injil, the Zabur is all from God. It says that if anyone is in doubt in Surah chapter 10 verses 94 concerning the things that are written in your Quran that ask me. So it, it, it says to ask me. Do you want me to read it for you? No, no. Your Quran says if you're in doubt concerning your book to ask Christians. That means at the time of 600 AD, at the time when Uthman compiled your book, the Bible was known to be an authentic book of God, and, it, and it's the truth. And it's the standard and the foundation for truth that your Quran is even based on. So if your Quran doesn't affirm or align with the truth of the Bible, the Quran is false. Because it came first. We're your older cousins. It's not the true book. That is not the true Bible. Okay. Well, can, if you can show me, a, if you can show me, if you can show me a different Bible at the time of Muhammad that differs from my own, then then if you can verify your Christian faith from this Bible which you have, you believe Jesus is Lord and God, right? Okay. Show me where it says Jesus said in this book that I am the God and worship me. Show me from this Bible. We went over this. Just I, I can't find it. It's not there. It's not there. It's not there. Means I'll give that to you. But one thing I can tell you. Let me speak. Let me speak. Right, go ahead. This means the book you are using and your faith does, you can't verify your faith. Wait a second. Just because the Bible doesn't say, I am God, worship me, that doesn't disprove the Bible. That just means that that exact sentence is not there. But one sentence that is in the Bible is Jesus says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. Logic tells me this. Jesus said, I am the Son of God in his own yeah, words. Jesus said that I am Lord in this Bible. Where did Jesus say Jesus, Lord? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You, call Lord, you call me Master and Lord and you say, well, where I am. 3.13. No, 13.13. Let me just get it from the Word of God. John 13.13 13 13 says, Lord. You don't understand the Bible. John 13.13. 13. Actually says I am. Jesus says here in John chapter 13, 13, it says, You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. So Jesus himself so I said, I am the Master and the Lord. So Jesus, Jesus said, said that. So I am, right? So I am. So I am, or so am I. Who, who is the author of this book? John. And who is Paul? Okay, so what are we doing? What, you just got what you wanted. He, you said, you asked me, where did Jesus say I am Lord? I showed you that. I didn't show you exactly. I am, so I am. Okay, I'll read it again to you. And I'll go into your other questions after. John chapter 13, 13. You call me Master and Lord. 
and you say well for so I am if I then your Lord and your master have washed your feet you also ought to wash one another Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 28 18 all authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth and the witness of the Apostle Paul and others is that Jesus Christ was Lord so it confirmed what Jesus himself said Okay, so did you did you see a source? You just said, where in the Bible he says, Lord, I just showed you. Is that, is that good enough? No, no, no. It, it has to be good for you. Okay, wait, wait. No, no, before you go on. You, okay, before you go on, you asked me where in the Bible did Jesus say he was Lord. I showed you. Was that good enough? I told you that that's not there. That's not there, but that doesn't disprove the Bible. Just, okay, Muhammad's not there either. It doesn't just prove that Muhammad was an historical figure. That's just not. That's no, but no, the so, so, What is the name of the Jesus mother? Mary. Huh? Mary. Mary. Okay. Can you show me in this Bible any anything about Mary? Sure, I can. What would you like to know? Anything about Mary? Show me. Mary. She was a virgin. Would you no, just like me, to me, know me, that? Me, you want me to show? You? I feel like Islam is like spiritually and logically good. Yeah. Okay, so the Bible, you want to learn about Mary. Um, the Bible says that, um, hold on a second. Okay, so it says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary, okay? And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have had favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb, and shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of you shall be called the Son of God. And behold, your cousin Elizabeth, she has also conceived a son in her old age. So you want to know about Mary? I, I can keep going. One more thing. Does this Bible describe about the hardship? Why did you want to know about Mary? Yeah, because this is, she is the mother of Jesus Christ. Okay? Sure. So does this Bible, does the Bible uh, uh, describe any any hardships faced by Mary after the birth of Jesus? Does anywhere this Bible? Yeah, it, it, it talks about um, her losing her sons, watching her son be crucified. It talks about um, her being in a predicament by giving birth to a child um, that seems and it looks like being out of wedlock, but it's not. Is it mentioned that uh, Jesus Christ was a uh, son of God, as you said, which is great understanding if they said Jesus. Okay, so this means that Jesus was a son of God, right? So who was born on December 25? I don't know, man. Not Jesus. Okay, so this means Jesus Christ was not born. Uh, not on December 25th, no. Do you know which day he was born? Not exactly. Okay. No problem. All right. You know, when you when you analyze the Bible and you study the Bible, it always stands the test of time. People can try to pick apart the Bible. They can try to challenge the Word of God. 
but the Word of God is still the Word of God. You see, if the Word of God, the Bible is not the Word of God, then the Quran would be false. I'm going to read to you some of the scriptures from the Quran, and I was taking my time to read through the Quran and highlight different things in the Quran. But I'm going to just read, read to you, can someone just grab that, that thing from my highlighter? Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm just I'm just picking up some random verses from the Quran. Okay. And uh, yeah, it's the English Quran that they hand out. It says here in Surah chapter five, verses sixty-eight. Say, people of the book, you have no ground to stand on until you observe the Torah and the gospel and what is revealed to you from the Lord. Now, this is around 600 AD at the time of Muhammad. Muhammad's own revelation from apparently God is saying to the Jews and the Christians, you have no ground, you have no foundation to stand on unless you observe the Torah, which is the five books of Moses, it's always been known as the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. At the time of Muhammad, historically, the Torah is the five books of the Bible. And the Gospels, at the time of Muhammad, everybody knew what the Gospels were. They had the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This was the standard text where we found the stories of Jesus Christ at the time of Muhammad. And according to Muhammad's revelation in Surah chapter 5, verses 68, it says, People of the book, you have no ground to stand on until you observe the Torah and the Gospel. Now, unless... Okay, let me, let me put it this way. If there was a problem with the Torah and there was a problem with the Gospels, God would not have said to the people of the book that they have to observe it unless God is telling people to observe something corrupt. But God is not a corrupt God. God is holy. God is merciful. In fact, I, I believe it's Alpha Thea that it says God is merciful. God is just and, and all sorts of things. He's good. God is good. So God is not going to tell anyone to follow Shaitan, to follow something corrupt. He's going to tell you to follow something that is true. And according to the Quran, it says to follow the Bible. Follow the Torah. Follow the Gospel. There's nothing wrong with the Gospels. In fact, the Gospels tell you to worship one God. The Gospels never tell you there's anything more than one God. The Gospels tell you that Jesus is the Messiah. The Gospels tell you that there's someone called the Messiah who came to save. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, is people try to distort the Gospels through their own mind and teaching but it's not the Gospels that are corrupt, it's people's minds are corrupt. People make traditions about the Gospels and say all sorts of stuff. But Jesus Christ came to save. The reason why his name is Isa, or Jesus, the word Jesus means God saves, or Savior. His name means Savior. So Jesus came to save us from our sins. The word Messiah, or Messiah, in the Arabic means anointed one. Jesus Christ was anointed to do something. What was he anointed to do? Well, his name meant Savior, and the word Injil means good news or gospel. It's the good news of God. What is the good news of God? We have to ask ourselves this question. I don't care who you are, but if you're going to believe in the Injil, which means good news, the meaning, the definition of Injil means good news, what is the good news that Jesus came to bring? Why did Jesus come with the gospel, the Injil, rather than the Quran or the Torah, Zabur? He came with the good news because the good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus. He gave Jesus so that you would be saved, that you could find salvation. God loves you. That's the good news, that you can find salvation, that you can find healing. Jesus came to heal the sick, to save the lost. He came for you and for me. This is the purpose of the Gospels. People like to argue and debate, but the purpose is so that you can know God and be forgiven by God. That's it. That's it. And there's one person that can do that. The only person can do that is Jesus. Jesus is the only one that came with the Injil. Jesus is the only one called the Messiah. Jesus is the only one that can do what he did. 
And that's why miracles are still done in the name of Jesus. That's why salvation is still granted and mercy of God is still granted in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus came with the good news. Now you can receive the good news too. You can find hope too. You can find salvation too. And it's available to you. The mercy of God is available to you. It's in Jesus. That's it. It's not hard to accept. If you would have a heart of faith and you believe in one God and that this one God gave the Injil, the good news to you through Jesus, and you accept Jesus into your heart, you accept the message of Jesus, you accept what he did for you, you can find forgiveness from God. You can find hope. That's it. He was anointed for this reason that you can come to know God. Would you come to know God? Is it written in the uh, Bible that uh, what's going to happen in the future? Yes, in fact, there's a lot of uh, amazing things written in the Bible about what's going to happen in the future. I'm going to read a couple of them very quickly. It says in Matthew chapter 24 in the Gospels, this is uh, what's going to happen. It says, sir? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going I'm to share with you quickly. Okay. It says here in Matthew chapter 24, It says here, In the last days, many shall come in my name. So many shall come in the name of Jesus, saying, or coming in his authority, saying, I am the Christ, or I am anointed, and shall deceive many. So there's going to be a lot of deceivers in the last days. It says, and you're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. There's going to be a lot of wars in the last days. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, there's... How many countries? Yeah, there is. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get there. It says, See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come, a come to pass. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines. There will be a lot of people without food. There will be pestilences, disease, biological wa warfare that's happening today. Earthquakes in diverse places. And all these are the beginning of sorrows, and they shall deliver you to be afflicted. So the Christians will be persecuted in the last days. They'll be killed. And they shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So Christians are going to be hated all around the world because they preach about Jesus. And they shall be, of be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and deceive many. So there's going to be a lot of liars. Much of this has happened. Oh yeah, yeah. Christians are being killed. Just, just uh, about two weeks ago or a month, uh, three weeks ago, 300 Christians were bombed in Sri Lanka. Um, all around the world, Christians are being killed in different countries, predominantly Islamic countries. Unfortunately, um, Christians are being killed all around the world. So that's already happening. But there is nothing, but there is nothing uh, specific. Like in Quran, it's, uh, there is a lot of signs, and that's happened. And scientists know. So. This is not it. This is this is just a this is a glimpse. This, I can bring more specifics. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. Um, then it says here, and the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. The gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So this gospel will be preached everywhere, just like it is today. That's very specific. And then it says here, When you shall see the abomination of desolation standing, spoken of by the prophet Daniel, stand in the holy place, which is, there's going to be someone called the Antichrist, or you know as the Dajjal, standing in the temple. Well, not yet. It's, it's going to happen. Don't, 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 don't hold me, man. Who are you? Who are you? It's my mic. I'm allowed to hold my own mic. You don't, you don't have the right to touch my mic. Now, I want to believe in Christ, no problem, okay? But if I want to believe in God, God should tell me, like, should prove to me, like, what's going to happen the day after tomorrow. Do you want to know what's going to happen? Has already happened or already, going to happen? No, it's written in Bible that's going to happen before a thousand years, and it's happening right now. Anything. Just yeah, sure. I just read you, like, many where, verses. Where, where? Just for the 300 Christians? I just read you that they're going to think that killing Christians are doing God a favor. That's happening today. What? Do you understand what I'm talking about? Are you guys, are you guys like, you speak English? 
No, no, seriously, because I, I keep saying the same thing. Who are you? Who the fuck are you? My name is David Lynn. That's who I am. And it's my microphone. My name is David Lynn. Give, give, give this girl a track or something. I'm not that good in English, okay? But you can go to Quran, okay? And it's written in Quran before a thousand years. It's written that after like a thousand years or any years, uh, there, there are gonna be signs. And that signs are happening right now, and it's more like it's more specific than. The tell me Bible. more. Tell me more. It's more specific. I have a Quran here. Do you know the ayah? I want to talk. I'm not that good, okay? But you can. But oh, you just told excuse, me. Excuse, so are you talking? You can go. You can. You can go and research for it, okay? And you will find it. And uh, I wish for you, like, to see the better religion. Okay, but you asked me if there's any signs in the Bible. You know? I told you. <laughs> you, you thought it wasn't specific. Then you said there's something in the Quran. And I said, show me in the Quran, you can't show me. So, as far as I know, there's nothing. Bro, you're not letting him read from the Quran. Would you, do you, okay, you have a question. And if anybody has a question, I'll give it to you. You gotta chill. <laughs> oh, I have to chill. Okay, I just I have a simple question. I am a Christian, but by the way. Okay. Um, Christian. 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 I just want to see if I get the Christian, uh, question that I tried to ask my sister. Okay? So, I know what's right and wrong, but I just want to see what her belief is towards me. My question is, how do you pray to get your answer from God? The Bible says to pray without ceasing, to have a genuine heart before the Lord. Um, Jesus taught us how to pray. He's pray, our Father who art in heaven. So that's a standard prayer that we reverence God, that he's above and not below. We pray that his kingdom come, his will be done. So we should have a willingness to surrender our heart to the Lord. The Bible says, he who has clean hands and a pure heart and has not lifted up his soul into vanity will enter in, in his paradise. And so when we purify our heart and repent of our sins and ask the Lord for whatever it is, and we have faith, the Bible says it, if we have faith, whatever we uh, pray for believing, it shall be done. If we have faith as small as a mustard seed, so to have faith means that there, we we need to base our 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 request on the word of God.